Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make a vintage wanted poster from the Wild West. This document is 1280 by 720 pixels with a resolution of 150 pixels per inch. I've included a Photoshop file for you to download so you can follow along. It's located in the project files or videos description. There are five layers, weathered wood planks, the plain base for your poster, an antique nail head, and two old worn paper textures. Click off the eyeballs of the top three layers and make your poster base active. Press Control or Command as you click on the thumbnail to make it shape into a selection. To hide the selection, press Control or Command H. Let's add some subtle dark variations onto the base. Open your burn tool and click on the arrow next to the brush size. I'll choose 200 pixels for the brush size and 0 for the hardness. The range is highlights and the exposure 60 to 65 percent. Randomly brush over it. It won't brush onto the wooden planks because the selection which we have hidden is protecting it. When you're done, press Control or Command D to delete the selection. Double click on the base thumbnail to call up the layer style window. Click Inner Glow and change the blend mode to Color Burn. Make the opacity 60 percent and the noise 20 percent. Click on the color box and choose black. Make the size between 65 to 70 pixels. Click on drop shadow. The blend mode is multiply and make the opacity between 45 to 50 percent. Make the distance 6 pixels and the size 5. Make the paper texture on the second layer visible and active. Change the blend mode to linear burn. Make the other paper texture visible and active and change the blend mode to multiply and the opacity to about 85 percent. Make the nail head visible and active. Since we only have one nail, we need to make copies for all the corners. Press Control or Command J to make a copy. Press V to call up your move tool and press and hold down Shift as you drag the copy to the right. Pressing Shift keeps it aligned on its horizontal axis. We'll merge these two nail heads by pressing Control or Command E. Make a copy of this layer and press and hold Shift as you drag down the copy of the two nail heads to the bottom. Merge these two layers so all the nails are on one layer. Click on the FX button and choose Bevel and Emboss. Make the style outer bevel, the technique chisel hard, the direction up, and the size 2 pixels. Uncheck global light. Make the angle minus 40 degrees and the altitude 30 to 35 degrees. We're ready to add some text. Open your type tool and click on the character text box. If you don't see it, go to window and choose character. My first font is called Regulators Condensed. This font, as well as all the others I'll be using, can be downloaded for free at defont.com. If you're not sure how to install fonts, watch my tutorial on how to do this at Blue Lightning TV. The link is located in the video's description. I'll make the point size 65 and click on the color box. I'm choosing 2B2825, which is a dark brown color. Type out Wanted. To move it, click on your Move tool and move your text. Don't be concerned if it's not centered. We'll take care of that in a bit. Open your Type tool again and click on your image. This time I'll choose the Dead Saloon. I'll make the point size 38 and type out the text. Call back up your Move tool to move it. Press T to call up your Type tool and click on your image. I'll choose IFC Insane Rodeo. I'll make the point size 145 and reduce the vertical scale to 36%. The vertical scale stretches or squashes the font vertically. Type out all your text. To make your second line smaller, highlight it, 
click on the T icon and drag it to the left, or type in a lower number. To reposition it, click on your Move tool and move it. Let's center all the text. With your top text layer still active, press and hold Shift as you click on the bottom text layer. This highlights all three layers. Click on the Align Horizontal Centers button. Let's place all the text into a folder. Press Ctrl or Command G and we'll rename it Text. Click on the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Open your rectangular marquee tool and drag out a narrow rectangle. Press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill it with a foreground color. Then delete the selection. We'll name this layer Line. Make a copy of it. Press V to call up your Move tool and drag the copy below Wanted. Make a copy of it and press Ctrl or Command T to call up your Transform tool. When you see a curved double arrow, press and hold Shift as you rotate the Transform counterclockwise until it snaps vertically. Go to the bottom and when you see a straight double arrow, drag it down. Click inside to move it. If it's too narrow, you can also press and hold the left or right arrow keys. Continue to adjust its length until it's between the nails. Then press Enter or Return to accept it. Make a copy of it, press and hold Shift and drag it to the right. Let's place all the border lines into its own folder. We'll name it Lines. Let's close the character window. Make a new layer and open your rectangular marquee tool. Drag out a rectangle in the middle. We're going to place our outlaw in this shape. Click on the layer mask button to make a layer mask of the selection next to the empty thumbnail. Click off the chain link. This allows us to move and or resize either one independently of the other. Click on the empty thumbnail to make it active. Open the image of the person you'd like to place into your poster and to get it into it, press Ctrl or Command A to select it and Ctrl or Command C to copy it. Click on the tab of your wanted poster and press Ctrl or Command V to paste the photo into it. Press V to call up your move tool and drag the photo to a position you like. If you need to resize it, use your transform tool. Double click on the photo to open the layer style window. Click on color overlay and click on the color box. Choose a light brown or sepia. I'm using C6B794. Change the blend mode to color. If you have areas of your photo where it's a bit too bright, press Ctrl or Command L to open your levels window. Play with the input and output levels to get just the right balance of brightness and contrast. At this point, let's age our text, lines, and photo by adding scratches to them to give them a worn and weathered look. We'll group our text, lines, and photo into a folder. We'll name it Text, Lines, and Pics for picture. Click on the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the folder. We'll add the scratches to this layer mask, which will essentially scratch all the layers inside this folder. Open your brush tool, click on the arrow to open your brush window, and open your list of brush presets. I'm choosing a set of brushes called Scratchy Grunge, which I downloaded from doghousedesignstudio.com. There are plenty of other scratch brushes at a number of other websites. If you're not sure how to install brushes, watch my tutorial at Blue Lightning TV. The link is also located in the video's description. When you see this, click OK, so we'll see only these brushes in the thumbnails window. Experiment with a variety of brushes in this set. You can always press Ctrl or Command Z to undo your last action. Let's slightly alter the shape of our poster to give it a more natural look. Click off the eyeball of the wood planks to hide the layer and press Ctrl, Shift, Alt, E 
or Command Shift Option E on a Mac to make a composite snapshot. Alt click or Option click on the eyeball of this layer to hide all the other layers. Now make your wood planks visible again. Go to Filter, Distort, and Wave. The Wave window will open. I'm choosing these numbers for this image, however, you may find different combinations work better for you, so experiment with them to find just the right amount of distortion. The last step is to give our overall image a dark vignette around its edges to bring more attention to the poster itself. Make a composite snapshot and go to Filter and Lens Correction. Click on the Custom tab and slide the vignette amount to the left. Using these techniques, have fun making your own vintage Wild West wanted poster of someone you know. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.